Hello. Uh, okay, so welcome to uh, key area five of unit three of that is human, higher human biology. And we're on the unit of neurobiology and immunology. And this is us starting the immunology part. So key areas one to four, neurobiology. We are now starting the immunology. Now, immunology means stuff to do with the immune system, which means how our bodies defend itself themselves against uh, diseases and germs and stuff. Uh, so the first thing we'll be looking at is KR5. It's only one video because it's a relatively short process and that's non-specific body defense. Okay, so in terms of what you learned about the national and national five about the immune system, you learned uh, a little bit in the multicellular organisms topic. You learned about the fact that white blood cells are kind of the really big important part of the immune system. Uh, you learned the two main types of white blood cells, which are phagocytes and lymphocytes. And phagocytes are the ones that are a bit like Pac-Man. They carry out phagocytosis, so they go up to a pathogen and they actually engulf it. Whereas lymphocytes, they don't actually ever go up to a pathogen. They produce these things called antibodies and they send the antibody to bind with the pathogen. Uh, and you will touch on these a bit more within this topic. In the next topic, we'll touch more on phagocytes and lymphocytes. Uh, we also learned that antibodies are specific to the pathogen, so your phagocytes, they deal with any type of pathogen really but lymphocytes are specific and pathogens are just any kind of disease causing thing like bacteria virus fungi any of these things that cause a disease they are a pathogen okay so non-specific defenses are about defenses of our body that just generally attack anything foreign as soon as they see it okay um so microorganisms are absolutely everywhere they're on surfaces in the air they're on our skin we have more bacteria in and bacteria cells in and on our body than we do of our own cells, okay? So we have to be able to defend ourselves from infection, from the constant attack of these pathogens. And it is constant. Every single breath, there will be a little mini fight happening inside your lungs to protect yourself from the pathogens that are inside the air that you just breathed in. Non-specific defenses defend the body against the entry of all types of microorganism, okay? So the idea is that it's non-specific. It's specifically said, it's not specifically saying, it's saying anything that shouldn't be here, we will try and block and kill it. So like we've kind of already touched on the idea of what pathogens are. You should, you should really know this from S1 and S2 really, mm -hmm. um, but just anything that can cause a pathogen is something like a bacteria, a fungus, a virus, a parasite, any of these things. You might get given examples of these as well. You might say a bacteria such as this or a virus such as this and just knowing that that means it's a type of pathogen. If it's naming any of these, it's a pathogen. It's going to cause some kind of disease, so it's a bad thing. Now, physical defences is our first non-specific defence. Physical defences physically stop pathogens from entering the bloodstream by forming a physical barrier. Now, that term there, epithelial cells, that is the barrier on our inside surfaces that help defend ourselves against infection entering our bloodstream. So if you think about it, you are essentially a hollow organism from mouth to anus. There is skin lining the entire digestive tract, all blocking pathogens from getting inside there. Additionally, in our lungs, we also have epithelial cells uh, lining our lungs, preventing pathogens from just boom, entering our bloodstream and then attacking us wherever they like inside our blood. OK, now, um, so epithelial cells are not the same as the skin cells that are on our actual skin. They're slightly different, but they are kind of inside skin cells, if you try and think of it like that. The other type of non-specific defences are your chemical defences, and these are ones you probably all know of and could probably think of anyway. Um, you do need to know some of them. So these chemical defences are ones they try and trap or kill the microorganisms again before they enter the bloodstream. Uh, the common ones are tears, unsurprisingly, in your eyes. They prevent things going into your eyes. The saliva in your mouth, the mucus in your nose mainly, but you have mucus in other places, and things like stomach acid. So basically, lots of things that are just, basically they're lining anything where a pathogen could get into your bloodstream. They're producing this thing to prevent it being able to get into the bloodstream. Okay, we'll just quickly cover that. You don't need to know the detail on tears and how they kill uh, pathogens, but it's useful to be aware of this. So the tears, the way that they are chemical defenses is not by just washing stuff out. They actually contain enzymes that destroy pathogens and the liquid obviously helps to physically wash stuff away out of the eye or into lymph vessels. Saliva uh, contains some antimicrobial proteins and enzymes that will just kill the microorganisms. And basically most things, they contain some kind of enzyme that's going to destroy uh, the pathogen. 
Mucus is produced along your airways and digestive tract. It's going to trap pathogens, meaning that they get stuck in one place and allows them to be swept up and out of the body in the mucus or excreted in feces. And stomach acid, it's a big, it's a bad acid in your stomach. It's acid, it kills things. So it kills any kind of pathogen, pathogen um, that's generally on food because food is the thing that is in your stomach. So if you've eaten something that's a bit off, that's your stomach acid's job to try and deal with those pathogens. Okay, so part one, physical defences, epithelial cells in the inside skin areas, chemical defences, tears, saliva, mucus, etc. Um, now, the kind of main part on this, the bit that's probably not quite as much common sense, is the inflammatory response, which is something you will see yourself in your body whenever um, you get hurt. So if a pathogen actually manages to get past your physical barriers and your chemical barriers, um, so your epithelial, things, your epithelial cells and things like your um, mucus and your tears and so on, the inflammatory response is the thing that will happen. And we're kind of going to go through that process. There are three main cells involved in it. There is, the first one is mast cells, which you probably haven't heard of before. Then there's phagocytes, which you will have learned about in Nat5. And then platelets, which you touched on a tiny bit in Nat5, but not really a great deal about. Yep. Now, this is part of the non-specific immune response as well. I think this is the one that's most likely to be examined about. I don't think you're going to get many questions about epithelial cells or chemical uh, responses because it's too easy slash not enough detail. This is the nice little niggly detailed bit that I think they will actually go after. So... First thing that happens is when you're hurt, mast cells recognize that you are hurt and release this important chemical you need to know called histamine. Okay. So what histamine does is it causes vasodilation of your arteries, so it makes the blood vessels become wider. It also makes the capillaries more permeable, so basically more things can kind of leak out of them into the damaged area. And what this does is it allows tissue fluid to leak into the damaged area. So tissue fluid can go to the area that is damaged, which is what causes it to be swollen. It also causes it to be hot. Like, you know yourself, if you get an injury and it starts to swell a bit, it tends to be hot. Okay, you can see from the diagram there is that the histamine essentially is being released by the mast cells. And you can see the histamine is going to bind to the capillaries. The capillaries are the site of action of histamine. You can counteract this effect by using something called an antihistamine. So for example, if you get an insect or a midgey bite, for example, you put an antihistamine on it. And what that does is it reduces the inflammation reaction, meaning that it doesn't get so hot and swollen and itchy. Phagocytes are the next thing to arrive. So we've got histamine making the capillaries more permeable. And you can see because they're more permeable, these larger cells called phagocytes can now leak out of the blood, so coming out of the plasma into the tissue fluid, and the phagocytes and other clotting elements arrive at the site of the injury. Phagocytes, as we remember from National 5, they engulf pathogens via the process called phagocytosis, and that destroys them. Now, we never ever say phagocytes eat the um, pathogens, we always say that they engulf them. So in terms of phagocytes, so it's a tiny bit more that you need to know past that five. So obviously the idea of the phagocyte actually engulfing the pathogen. But what happens is once the phagocyte has engulfed the pathogen, it will destroy it using digestive enzymes. Now these digestive enzymes are held in a capsule called a lysosome. So it's another one of your cell structures. And what it does is that the lysosome will actually then kind of merge with the pathogen when it's inside the phagocyte release its enzymes and it's the enzymes from the lysosome that actually break down the pathogen itself. So not really the phagocyte does it, it's the enzymes from the lysosome within the phagocyte that breaks down the pathogen. Okay, phagocytes also have another role in releasing these chemicals called cytokines or cytokines, don't know how to pronounce that. Um, cytokines are a protein molecule and they, uh, they act as like a chemical beacon, a signal that attracts other white blood cells of the specific immune response to the site of injury, okay? It's really, really helpful, the idea that, okay, right, we've got our first line of defense is our non-specific defense, but say you've got something that needs a much more advanced response, i.e. the specific immune response, cytokines are going to draw that specific immune response to the exact site of injury so that those cells come to where they're needed so that they can start doing their job. Okay, so to summarize this inflammation, that's kind of the main bit of this video. That literally is pretty much the whole topic already mm -hmm. done. But um, just to summarize inflammation, the first thing that happens is your mast cells 
uh, arri arrive at the site of the injury and they will release histamine. Histamine is going to dilate the capillaries and increase permeability of the capillaries. Okay. The phagocytes then arrive and they will engulf the pathogen in the process known as phagocytosis. Phagocytes are going to release cytokines as well to attract other white blood cells and there's a bit missing off the end of this that I've just realised. Uh, platelets were utterly ignored, but platelets are going to be there as clotting factors and they're going to do the clotting action that you should know from platelets. So they release clotting factors and then we've got prothrombin to thrombin and then we've got uh, fibrinogen to fibrin. And the idea is any damage that might have been caused to, say, a damaged capillary can be fixed that way. So that's it for the non-specific immune response. Realistically, it's mostly inflammation, a little bit of physical and chemical defenses. The next uh, key area, because that was a tiny one, the next key area is specific immune defenses. We have got after this three key areas to go and you are done human biology, this enormous course. Uh, we'll see you next time.